You're listening to Body Confident Friday, the place to be for tools, strategies, and perspectives to help you feel more comfortable and confident in your body. I'm Judy Craddock, the body confidence coach, author of the little book of body confidence and creator of the body confidence journey, the coaching program for women who want to stop chasing the perfect body and embrace the one that they are in. Welcome to the show. Today I want to talk about the principles of intuitive eating and how they can help you to have a better relationship with your body and food. Now this episode is part of a three-part series where I'm talking all about intuitive eating and body image and in episode number 190 I explained what intuitive eating is and some indicators that your relationship with food isn't as peaceful as it could be. So if you haven't listened to that episode yet, you might wanna go check it out before diving into this one. And in this episode, which is episode number 191, I'm exploring intuitive eating in more detail and I'm gonna specifically look at the 10 principles that underpin intuitive eating. And in the final episode of this series, which will be episode 192, I'm gonna pull it all together to take a closer look at the relationship between intuitive eating and body image and how you can use the principles of intuitive eating to feel a greater peace with food and in your body. So back to this episode. If you're dissatisfied with your body, there is a high likelihood that either you are currently dieting or you've dieted in the past because when you are dissatisfied with your body, there is a big motivation to be thinner because that's what we've all been conditioned to believe will make us happier and healthier. But the reality is that diets seldom result in weight loss in the long term. At most, this happens about three to 5% of the time. And instead, years of chronic dieting can leave you heavier and with a disordered relationship with food. And I talk more about how to tell if you have a less than peaceful relationship with food in episode 190. So that's just a reminder to go check that out. And so when people decide to stop dieting and accept their body, and I've found this a lot with my clients, it can be really hard for them to trust their body's natural hunger and find a way to reconnect with eating in the way that they were naturally born with. But what intuitive eating does is it offers us a way to do this, to help you get back to your default eating mode. And it does this through its 10 guiding principles of intuitive eating. So I'm gonna briefly talk you through each of these principles and then tell you how you can learn more about this if you want to. But before I do that, just a little disclaimer for me, I'm not an intuitive eating expert, nor do I specialize in disordered eating or eating disorders, although I have done extensive research around all of these topics, just because they do impact my clients and my potential clients. So it's it's really useful and important for me to have an understanding of these things. But what I'm sharing with you here today is purely for educational purposes, and it's not a substitute for therapy or a clinical diagnosis. So if you are worried that you may have an eating disorder, please speak to your doctor or you can get in touch with an eating disorder charity or organization in your country who will be able to give you more information and advice. And I've listed details of some organizations that may be able to help below wherever you are listing. So let's talk about the 10 principles of intuitive eating. So these principle principles underpin intuitive eating and it's worth reiterating that intuitive eating is not a diet so these principles that i'm going to share with you are not a list of rules and they shouldn't be treated like they are so i'm just going to give you the headline principles and then i'm going to dig into a little bit more detail about them so the first principle is to reject the diet mentality 
The second is to honour your hunger. The third principle is to make peace with food. And the fourth is to challenge the food police. Principle five is discover the satisfaction factor. And principle six is to feel your fullness. Principle number seven is to cope with your emotions with kindness. And principle eight is to respect your body. Principle nine is movement, feel the difference. And finally, principle 10 is honour your health with gentle nutrition. So let's talk about principle one, reject the diet mentality. And it's worth pointing out what is meant by a diet. And it's any style of eating that's aimed at changing your body weight or shape, or is trying to achieve some perfectionistic idea of health or wellness. And you'll find diets masquerading under different names. So they can be sold as lifestyle plans, resets or protocols. But if they're aimed at weight loss or being thinner, they're just diets in disguise. And the reason that you want to reject the diet mentality is because it first of all, stops you from honouring your body's natural internal cues. And secondly, because they just don't work or diets just don't work at achieving weight loss in the long term. In fact, diets can actively cause harm through weight cycling, which is when you lose weight through a diet and you put it all back on. So you go on another diet and you put it all back on and also through weight stigma. So that's principle one. Principle two is to honour your hunger. And honouring your hunger means making sure that you're meeting your body's needs for food and energy and also just being able to recognise the signals that your body is giving you when it's hungry. And it's also worth pointing out that honouring your hunger doesn't mean you only eat when you're hungry. If you were to say you only eat when you're hungry, that is basically a diet. You can also eat for pleasure and this is a perfectly natural part of a healthy relationship with food and it can be really tricker tricky tricker tricky to honor your hunger after years of diets because we're told to suppress or ignore our hunger by diet culture principle three is to make peace with food and this means allowing yourself to eat all foods There are therefore no forbidden foods or bad foods and you give yourself unconditional permission to eat what you want, how much you want and when. And I know that this seems so alien because diets tell you exactly what to eat, how much and when. And also diet culture really teaches us that it's this permission that results in bad health when in fact it actually leads to a decreased likelihood of binging on those off-limit foods. Principle four is to challenge the food police. So the food police can be your own inner critic judging your food choices or it can be others doing that. And this principle means that for yourself you tune into a kinder, more compassionate voice and you also set boundaries around other people who think it's okay for them to comment on what you are eating. So principle five is to discover the satisfaction factor. And this is really about learning to take pleasure in food, really fully fully enjoying it. So it's flavors and textures, and also enjoying the shared connection that you can get from enjoying a meal with other people. And you compare this with diet culture, which demonizes pleasure and leads you to seesaw between deprivation and guilt. So you deprive yourself and feel miserable. And then finally you give in to that food that you really want and you end up feeling guilty for eating it. But if you eat foods that you find satisfying, that ultimately leads to greater balance in your eating. And if you just eat what you want to in the first place, you're less likely to feel out of control around that food. Principle six is to feel your fullness. So if you've been dieting for a long time, you may not recognize your hunger or your fullness. And feeling your fullness is tuning into your body's signals that it's had enough to eat. And this can be really tricky to do. 
it's really difficult to fully sense your satiation levels until you've rejected diets and given yourself unconditional permission to eat. But if you're still dieting or behaving like you're on a diet, that deprivation can override your body's fullness signals. And the reason why that happens is that your body thinks that it's gone into um, starvation mode. And so it will make you want to keep eating. And so being able to work through principle one, which is to reject diet culture, is vital to help you be able to fully experience your fullness. Principle seven is to cope with your emotions with kindness. So this principle is not about demonizing emotional eating. So sometimes we all eat when we're experiencing difficult emotions and that is completely natural and normal. We can also eat for pleasure according to principle five, which is discover the satisfaction factor. Emotional eating is a type of eating for pleasure. And it's okay sometimes to eat for comfort or to distract yourself. This is part of a peaceful relationship with food. But if eating has become the only strategy you have to cope with difficult emotions, of course that can be problematic. But what you're not going to do is remove the food altogether. Instead, you add other things to help you cope with your difficult emotions. Principle eight is to respect your body. And so this isn't about loving your body. It's more about body neutrality. And it's it's about respecting your body's size and shape, even as it changes, and honoring its basic needs for sleep, food, and rest and being able to recognize its physical strengths and limitations. And this is a principle that really ties in with the work that I do around body image. Principle nine is movement, feel the difference. And this is this principle is rather than feeling that you should move your body doing very traditional exercise to try to lose weight or mold your body in some way, this is about doing movement that feels good to you. And the primary aim of movement is not about sculpting your body. It's all about pleasure and self-care. And this is also about being able to tune into what your body wants. So when it has a natural desire to move or, or to rest. And finally, principle 10 is gentle nutrition. And you need to approach this principle with care because gentle nutrition is not about nutrition from a place of policing what you eat. It's about nutrition from a place of self-care and it would be very easy for this principle to turn into a diet rule. But what it involves is using basic nutrition concepts to help you manage your energy levels and feel your best. So that means being able to choose foods that you will find satisfying and sustaining. So to give you an example, I know that if I've got a long day and I don't have a lot of time to build in snacks, etc. I need a breakfast that's going to give me lots of energy. So a breakfast with avocado works for me because those fats really help to satisfy and sustain me. And so this principle is not about perfection in what you eat, which is kind of what diet and wellness culture is all about. It's not about fad foods or um, or following or following any rules. So that's a really brief run through of the 10 principles of intuitive eating. And I've really only just scratched the surface of these and probably not done them just justice, but this is about giving you a taster. And if you want to know more about the 10 principles of intuitive eating, I really encourage you to check out uh, the book Intuitive Eating, a revolutionary anti-diet approach. And this is by the mothers of intuitive eating Evelyn Trebol and Elise Reschk, and I really hope I've said those names correctly. I'd also recommend you read Anti-Diet by Christy Harrison, and she also has an amazing podcast and an introduction to intuitive eating course, and you can access all those resources from Christy on her website, which is christyharrison.com, and I'll also leave links to all those resources below wherever you are listening to this. Now, 
Many of these principles overlap with the work that I do with clients, particularly principle one, which is about rejective diet, rejecting diet mentality. I spend a lot of time with clients helping them to do that. Principle four, challenging the food police, helping clients tune into a kinder inner voice and helping them to set boundaries with people who are commenting on their body or their food choices. Principle eight, respecting your body. And principle nine, movement, feeling the difference. And these are all topics that I cover in my coaching program, The Body Confidence Journey. And I truly believe that healing the relationship with your body can help to heal your relationship with food and vice versa. So there's huge benefits to be had from doing both body image work and working with the principles of intuitive eating. Now I'd like to close out this episode with a few questions to help you reflect on what I've shared with you today. So my first question is, how did you react to the 10 principles of intuitive eating? Did you have a positive reaction or was it a little bit negative? Were you maybe a little bit angry or disbelieving? And what does your reaction tell you about how you relate to your food and and your body? So if you had quite an angry or disbelieving reaction to the principles of intuitive eating, maybe you're starting to think that you've been quite brainwashed by diet culture and that's having a really big impact on the way that you relate to food and your body. And finally, of all the principles that I've shared with you today, which intuitively feels like a good place for you to start or continue working on healing your relationship with food and your body? Now, I'd love to see your answers to these questions, so please do pop them in the comments below wherever you are listening. That's all I've got for this episode of Body Confident Friday. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope to catch you next time.